Hey guys, it is NCS Fan 001 here for another one of those trophy list analysis videos. Today's game is Star Wars Outlaws, aka Far Cry in Space, aka Far Cry meets Star Wars. At least that's what I'm getting based on what I've seen of the game. I mean, the game looks okay, but it's definitely not going to be like a day one for me. It does seem to be a fairly typical Ubisoft open world title. But in terms of the trophy list, it comes with 50 total trophies worth 1,350 points, 1 platinum, 2 golds, 11 silvers, and 36 bronzes. The game releases on August 30th, 2024, so let's go ahead and take a look at the list. So as always, I am looking at this trophy list from the perspective of a trophy hunter, not necessarily as some mega, super, ultra, massive mega fan of the series, now, I am a pretty big Star Wars fan, but like I said, this game to me just sort of looks like a fairly generic Ubisoft open world type game just with Star Wars. So you can take some of my opinions with a grain of salt. If maybe I'm wrong on something, feel free to correct me in the comments. So we start off with our Platinum Trophy titled Outlaws, which is the trophy that you get for unlocking all the other trophies in the game for those of you that are not on PlayStation. Start out with a bronze, it wasn't me, bribe an Imperial officer to clear wanted level 5. So you're going to have an alert system that's just presumably like something like GTA 5 or other GTA games. And presumably that means that you can, it's almost like the pardon letter from like Red Dead Redemption 1 if I remember that correctly. You guys remember that at all? Now we have a couple of silver trophies. They live up to the name, clear wanted status by completing a Death Trooper confrontation event. So presumably that means if you get up to a high wanted level, if you just clear out the enemies, and then I guess just run away after that, that should allow you to escape them. That's something sort of like getting rid of the Sentinels in No Man's Sky, presumably. Shoot first. Defeat six enemies simultaneously using Adrenaline Rush. That doesn't seem too difficult. Now we're on to some bronzes. No match for a good blaster. Fully upgrade a blaster module configuration. So just a weapons upgrade trophy. Got you something. Collect all Nyx treasures. So that is a collectible type, and of course there will be trophy guides out there for stuff like that. Galactic Gourmet. Sample all galactic street food. Once again, that's another collectible, so I'm sure there'll be plenty of guides for it. Good listener. Listen to the longest sob story in the galaxy. So I don't know if that's going to be like a mission-specific trophy or... Maybe like a side mission type of thing, or it might have to do with like audio logs or something even. I guess we'll have to see. Experience outranks everything. A silver trophy. Complete all expert quests. So part of completing all the quests in the game. Because I think there is a trophy later on or several trophies for completing all the quests in the game. I will say though, I don't remember seeing any difficulty related trophies. So presumably you can still play everything on easy. Just expert quests I'm assuming are just like a harder version of normal quests. Another silver trophy, Adventure and Excitement. Discover all planet areas. I'm not always the biggest fan of location-based trophies because they don't always work the best in some games out there. Give me the good stuff. Buy an item from a merchant's VIP stock. So I assume you can't get access to the VIP stocks until like later in the game or maybe you complete a quest for the merchant and then you can access it. Shouldn't be anything too difficult. Another silver trophy here, Old School Cool. Acquire the Disruptor Gear Set. So I assume that's going to be a little bit like Far Cry 6 with those special backpack type weapons. I can't even remember what they were called at this point. Now we're on to a bunch of bronzes. Honest work. Complete 40 contracts. I don't know if that means quests or just like miscellaneous activities, but that seems easy enough. Okay, now we have several reputation trophies. Cutthroat politics, cloak and dagger. What you see is what you get, and the Queen's word is law. These are for reaching maximum reputation with the Pike Syndicate the Crimson Dawn, the Hut Cartel, and the Ashiga Clan. So reach maximum reputation with each of these four factions. Then there's also a bronze trophy for Think I Had a Choice, reach the lowest possible reputation with a faction. Man, that's bringing back some uh, Mercenaries 2 vibes because you had to max out reputation with all the five factions that you could in that game and then you had to like piss off all of them later on for a trophy. So that actually brings back some Mercenaries 2 flashbacks. I would assume that you probably want to do the lowest possible reputation first and then like try to max out everyone's reputation after that would make the most sense. Now for a silver trophy, it's mine now. Acquire the Scoundrel gear set. Presumably that's once again going to be along the lines of items that you either have to find or partially some rewards from quests. 
stuff like that, I would assume. So it's probably nothing too difficult. And if it is more collectible based, of course, there'll be guides for it. Now back to bronzes, stay on target, complete your first intel chain, so presumably a series of missions or perhaps a series of other collectible types. Easy pickings, pickpocket a customer in a cantina on each planet, so that technically acts a bit like a collectible type of trophy. I think there's five total planets that we're going to be having access to in this game. Against all odds, win your first fixed Fabier race, I apologize if I butchered any names in that, but that's just a finish a race. You don't even have to, or just win a race, nothing too difficult there. No such thing as luck. Cheat and win a Sabat game against Lando, so that's presumably only going to be on like one planet. Hopefully that's not missable or anything, because there is the possibility of missable trophies in here that I'll get to a little bit later. There is no try, get a high score in an arcade game, pretty self-explanatory. Right back at you, defeat 20 enemies using items fetched by Nyx. Seems pretty simple. How rude, blind 30 enemies with Nyx attacks. Again, sounds like a typical sort of companion type trophy that we get in a lot of these games. So now we get to a pretty interesting gold trophy. Punching up. Defeat each syndicate's capital ship without taking hull damage. So that one does concern me because if you can't refight the capital ships then that could potentially be very problematic. I mean, I know that you could probably, you know, back up your save and whatnot, and then reload your save if you had to, but to have a trophy like that in an Ubisoft game is not super, super common. Usually Far Cry games don't really have any majorly missable trophies. Avatar, I don't know if it had any missable trophies. It might have had, like, one, but it may not have had any. So, Assassin's Creed games, I think some of them can have missable trophies sometimes, but not always, or not often, or not a whole lot of them. So, I do have to wonder a little bit about that trophy, if you can replay those encounters, perhaps. If you can, then it wouldn't be missable. If you can't, then you probably want to wait and do those once you have, like, a lot of upgrades or something, and are pretty strong, and can hopefully do it a little more easily. Back to bronzes, might want to buckle up. Fly into space in a fully upgraded trailblazer, so fully upgrade your ship seems simple. I'll bet you have defeat 20 enemies distracted by fast talk. I don't know if that's one of your abilities or if that is one of your, like, companion potentials. But either way, seems easy enough. Now another silver trophy. The heavier they fall, defeat a raider to clear wanted status. So it looks like there's multiple ways to clear the wanted status. I don't know if the raider is more like a bounty hunter or what. But it sounds like there's multiple ways to clear this whole wanted status thing. Back to bronzes, sometimes I amaze even myself, defeat an enemy ship after doing a loop maneuver, seems easy enough. Never tell me the odds, defeat an enemy ship without dealing the finishing blow with lasers or missiles. So, that makes me think you just have to like, crash into them, which I mean, that's not really that big a deal, but that would be kind of a random one. Into darkness, destroy 10 enemy ships inside the Kajimi Nebula, seems easy enough. Like a Bantha, perform a perfect landing with the speeder, probably easy enough. Galaxy Drift, perform a 30 second power slide drift. Again, that's probably not anything too difficult. Don't get cocky, defeat five enemies with adrenaline rush on the speeder simultaneously. So that's, wasn't there a trophy already for that? Defeat six enemies simultaneously using adrenaline rush. And then this one is five enemies with adrenaline rush while on a speeder. So I guess you could about maybe combine those even. That wouldn't be too bad. Okay, another silver trophy into the mainframe, slice 10 advanced terminals. I don't know what the terminal slicing is going to be like, if it's going to be, you know, a mini game or just an immediate thing that happens. Probably a mini game, given it's a silver trophy. Slice like you, slice 20 total terminals, simple enough. Now you see me, now you don't disable an alarm using a security terminal while the alarm is active. So that sounds a little bit like one of the ones that was in Far Cry 6, where it was like you had to disable all of the alarms from a specific panel or something within certain outposts, so I assume it's going to be sort of like that. Get Rhythm, pick 20 locks with the data spike. I'm assuming they're just going to rip the typical, you know, Fallout Bethesda lock picking mini game, but I guess we'll have to see. Made it somehow, acquire a blaster, a starship, and a speeder. That sounds like a story related trophy. Tip the scales, complete all main quests on Toshara. One job at a time, complete all main quests on Kajimi. Making friends, escape from Jabba's palace, so presumably all of those are just story-related trophies, probably unmissable. 
Rare Friends, complete all main quests on Tatooine. Spike, to liberate the, the original Super Viper droid. So presumably, again, those are story trophies. Now we're back to silver trophies, best of the best. Complete all main quests on Akiva, if that's how that's pronounced. The director learns Silro's secret. I on the score, complete all main quests on Canto Blight. And calling in some favors, destroy the Revelator, our second gold trophy. So I'm assuming that all of those trophies right there near the bottom of the list are all just story related and probably unmissable. Because I mean it says main quests, so don't have to worry about the side quests and stuff. So, so it looks like five planets or moons to explore. So Toshara, Kijimi, uh, Tatooine, Akvia, and Kanto Blight. So five places to explore, several story related trophies. So, overall, the Platinum Trophy looks like a fairly typical trophy list for Ubisoft. You've got some kill-based trophies, you got some exploration and collectible-based trophies, you got a few story trophies, and of course there's no difficulty trophies, which is always good, so you should just be able to play on whatever the easiest difficulty is. But I do just have to wonder about those one or two trophies that could potentially be missable, especially that one gold trophy for defeating all of those enemy ships without taking damage. So I don't know if that's going to be missable or how particularly hard that trophy is going to be. I assume, though, that you would be able to back up your save and reload it or re-download it if you needed to. Or maybe you can actually replay those encounters potentially. But either way, the Platinum Trophy, again, looks like a fairly typical Ubisoft list. I would estimate a 3 out of 10 if nothing is missable, and definitely a little bit higher if any of those trophies are missable. But again, that's not a super common thing to have happen in Ubisoft games, especially more long-term missable trophies like that. Usually if they give you a missable trophy, it's something you can knock out pretty quickly. As for time, I'm going to assume probably at least 40 hours to get through everything. But again, I could be wrong. You might be able to blast through it faster than that, or it might just be a ton of content that takes longer. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, ring the bell if you haven't done so already. Star Wars Outlaws releases on August 30th, 2024. I will play it at some point once it goes on sale. I don't really intend to play it anytime soon. I'm also pretty sure it will get DLC like most Ubisoft games seem to, especially these, you know, Far Cry and Avatar type games. So just keep all of that in mind. But thank you guys for watching. See you back here soon for another video.